Bodies lost for more than a century turning up inside a sunken steamship. Shipwrecks in the Black Sea sitting so perfectly preserved, they still have coils of rope. And a 130-foot predator made of thousands of cloned organisms drifting through the pitch black water. These are disturbing discoveries made by deep sea robots. Most people have never heard of the Ventnor, and honestly, I hadn't either until I dug into this. It was a steamship that left Westport in 1902, carrying the exhumed remains of 501 Chinese men who'd lived and worked in New Zealand during the gold rush. These men had paid into a community fund so that when they died, their bodies could be sent back home. The Ventnor was supposed to make that happen, but the ship hit a reef and it went down. 13 crew members died and every coffin sank with the ship. For over a hundred years, nobody could find the wreck. But in 2012, a small team led by John Albert and underwater explorer Keith Gordon followed a tip from locals who thought they knew the general area. Their echo sounder picked up a big shape on the seafloor. Following year, they sent down an ROV and yes, they'd finally found the ship. Divers went down in 2014 and brought up artifacts, but no bones. It wasn't until May of 2020, while a team was filming a documentary called Fallen Leaves that an ROV slipped inside the wreck and finally found actual human remains. Back in 1708, a Spanish ship called the San Jose got blown up by the British near Colombia. It was packed with about $17 billion worth of gold, silver, and emeralds. Spain was using all this treasure to pay for a war, but it all ended up at the bottom of the ocean. People searched for this wreck for over 300 years. Then in 2015, they finally found it using underwater robots from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Robots took pictures of bronze cannons with special designs, pottery pieces, and gold coins all spread out over the seafloor. You'd think finding billions in treasure would be good news, right? But not exactly. As soon as they announced the discovery, unsurprisingly, everyone started fighting over it. Colombia says it's theirs because it's in their waters. Spain says they still own it because it was a military ship. And there's actually a UN rule about that. Then there's the Caracara people from Bolivia who say the silver belongs to them because their ancestors were forced to mine it. On top of all that, an American salvage company called Sea Search Armada claims they should get it because they did research that helped find it. So now nobody can touch the treasure. The Colombian Navy has their own robots down there basically standing guard over billions of dollars that's just sitting on the ocean floor, all because nobody can agree on who gets what. When scientists started sending ROVs down to explore the deep ocean near hot vents and trenches, they expected some weird stuff. But in 2002, a robot called Ventana found something near Monterey Canyon that was way weirder than anyone predicted. They were checking out a dead whale on the seafloor when they noticed these strange pink feathery things all over the bones. And it turns out these are worms called Osidax, which means bone eater in Latin. And that name is exactly what they do. The females burrow into the bones of dead animals to eat the fats and proteins inside. You can only see their feathery parts sticking out because the rest of their body is deep inside the bone. They don't have a mouth or a butt. Instead, they make acid to drill into the bone and they have special bacteria living in them that break down the bone's collagen and fats. The male worms are tiny, so tiny in fact, that they live inside the female's body. Hundreds of microscopic males can live in a single female. Their only job is to fertilize her eggs. So basically the female is this bone-eating machine that carries around hundreds of males inside her. And these zombie worms are everywhere down there, eating up all the bones they can find. Between 2015 and 2017, a research team working on the Black Sea Maritime Archaeology Project was sailing along the Bulgarian coast, mapping the seafloor to understand how rising sea levels after the last ice age affected the people who once lived there. That was the entire goal, but while they were mapping the seabed, their scans started showing shapes that definitely weren't natural. One after another, these outlines turned out to be shipwrecks. There were more than 40 of them. John Adams, the lead investigator, said the whole thing was a complete bonus because they weren't even looking for ships. The area they were surveying just happened to be the perfect place for old wrecks to survive. Below about 150 meters, the Black Sea doesn't have any oxygen, which means bacteria can't break things down the way they do in other oceans. Adams said this environment has basically frozen these ships in time. And he wasn't kidding. Some of the vessels still have intact rigging, carved decoration. There are even coils of rope lying where the crew left them. The ships are from different time periods, from the Byzantine era to later Ottoman trading vessels. One of the most famous is an Ottoman ship from somewhere between the 17th and 19th centuries, nicknamed the Flower of the Black Sea because of the carved post topped with little petal designs. 
Using ROVs, the team has been able to study every inch of these wrecks without even having to touch them. Imagine a pill bug, but just make it the size of a small dog. That's basically what giant isopods are. They're creepy looking, no doubt, but they're very important. Whenever something big dies and sinks to the bottom of the ocean, like a whale, these isopods show up to eat it. A robot called Alvin studied one species and found out just how good these creatures are at surviving when there's almost no food. The robot watched one actively swing around looking for seaweed that had sunk down. When it finds food, it uses these serrated mouth parts to grind it up. Scientists looked at the bacteria in their guts and found they can break down really tough materials that most animals can't even digest. Their whole body is just designed to squeeze every bit of nutrition out of whatever they find. Down in the deep ocean, food can be super rare, so you either adapt to eat basically anything or you die. These giant isopods are really good at making sure they don't die. They've been around for millions of years. Researchers using advanced robots found these bizarre underwater lakes sitting on the seafloor of the Red Sea, more than a mile down, about 1,770 meters deep. Yeah, there are actually lakes under the ocean. SpongeBob SquarePants going to the beach seems a lot less silly now. These underwater lakes exist because the water in these pools is so salty and dense, it can't mix with regular seawater, so it just sits there. It's a bit like oil and water not mixing. These pools are absolutely deadly though. The salt content is dangerously high, and there's no oxygen. So if a normal fish or crab accidentally swims into one, it dies almost immediately. The cells in their body just stop working. And there are tons of dead animals around the edges of these pools, but somehow life still finds a way. There are bacteria and microbes that live in these pools, and that discovery is huge for helping us better understand how life works, because even in places we consider impossible for life, organisms can evolve to survive there. What you're looking at here is not a graphic. That big, long, wiry thing, that's a living creature. In 2020, a robot called Sebastian captured video of the longest animal ever found on Earth, estimated at 46 meters long or about 130 feet. Now, it's not technically one animal, but it functions like one. Scientists call it a colonial organism. It's thousands of tiny organisms that clone themselves and fuse together into one giant floating chain. Each little piece called a zooid has its own job. Some sting and catch prey, some digest food, some handle reproduction, but they're all connected and working together as one massive creature. It's built to catch as much prey as possible by spreading out over a huge distance. Off the coast of Los Angeles near Santa Catalina Island, robots found a massive dumping ground 3,000 feet deep. The seafloor down there is covered with old barrels, thousands of them, sitting there corroding. At first, scientists thought it was mostly DDT, which is a pesticide that was banned because it's so toxic. And yeah, they found a lot of that spread across the area, but then it got worse. The barrels themselves contain radioactive waste, stuff like tritium and carbon-14 that hospitals and factories dumped between the 1940s and 60s. Back then, people figured the ocean was so big that you could just throw toxic waste down there and it would disappear. Out of sight, out of mind, but no, this stuff doesn't just disappear. It sits on the bottom, rusting and leaking poison into the water. In June of 2023, a submersible called Titan imploded on its way down to see the Titanic wreck. Five people died instantly. After it went missing, they sent ROVs down to search the seafloor. The robots found the debris field. Pieces of the hull were mangled and scattered around. The tail section with the company logo was still recognizable. The back titanium dome was there as well. Looking at how everything was spread out and destroyed, it was clear what happened. The sub couldn't handle the pressure and it imploded in a split second. That's been the video for today. I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next one.